it's now time to implement Bootstrap. What Bootstrap's going to do for us is it's going to make our site better looking and a little bit more functional or a little bit more fluid because it implements HTML and CSS in the way we need it. So more specifically, the CSS, the cascading style sheets, that is, it's going to make it look better. Now, if you've worked with Bootstrap before, you will know that there is a JavaScript portion of this framework. Now, Bootstrap is not likely to implement TypeScript in the near future. So that's actually something we need. So we can't actually use the standard JavaScript framework for Bootstrap. And that's why we're going to introduce a third party framework that is called Angular Bootstrap. And it actually implements a lot of the things that we need that are in the JavaScript stuff. So before we actually jump into that portion of it, um, I will say that Bootstrap is a great framework for making your stuff look good. So if you're not that familiar with Bootstrap, we're going to go through some of the basics now, um, just so you have better famili familiarity with it. So this is really introducing the Bootstrap framework with the CSS and how grids work. If you're already familiar with those things, you can actually skip to the next one when we implement a lot of the Angular Bootstrap components. Um, so that's what we'll be doing in the next one. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Bootstrap itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on getting started. And of course, I'm not going to actually download anything. Instead, I'm going to just go down to the basic templates. These templates will show you generally how Bootstrap works. So let's go ahead and open one. I'm just going to open up the uh, Jumbotron one. And I'm going to collapse down the, the template. Notice how things are moving. Um, so this is how Bootstrap works. It's, it's called a responsive framework. And it allows us to just work in a way that makes it easier for us so we don't have to worry about designing all of these things, right? So everything about Bootstrap is basically pre-built for us. But of course, that doesn't mean we can't customize it. So if you're on Chrome and you do control click or right click, you can actually inspect any given element and you can change some colors, right? So you can change colors for in, in, like these built-in and default classes that they actually have. Um, so the other important key here is the grid system. So notice as I'm breaking it down, um, things change in size, right? So these blocks here are changing from being three across to being one across. Now, how that actually works has to do with their grid system. Now, I'm just going to be covering the basics here. So I don't want to go into too much detail here because there's definitely a lot more that you can read about here. And really, this is about Angular. It's not about Bootstrap. But since we're going to be using Bootstrap, I wanted to give you at least a little overview. So if we look at the grid system and I look here, this is how it works. So you basically set up divs as it's written out here. You create a row and in that row, you can put in columns. Now, by default, there are 12 columns in every row. Yes, there are 12. I'm not exactly sure why it's split up into 12. There's probably some design reason for it but it's split, split up into 12. So what that means is each little block represents one of those things depending on the number you put after. So as you see here, column MD8, that means it's taking up eight columns. Column MD4, that's taking up four columns and so on. So when you have three sets of MD4, you have 12 all the way across. When you have six and six, you have 12 all the way across. Again, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. This is probably the reason why they have 12 is because sometimes you want to have eight across. So sometimes you want to see something like that. And sometimes you want to have four. But Bootstrap itself is doing that. So what I would imagine is this distance right here. So going from this end, from right here to here, that's probably columns um, eight, something eight. And then right here is probably four. It's also possible that it's 10 and this is two. Um, but the, the thing is, is it's working with columns. So if this doesn't exactly make sense, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna go into Sublime Text. I'm gonna open up a new file here and I'm actually gonna put it into its own window. And we're just gonna save this as 
um, bootstrap.html. Actually, I need to add one more thing to it so we just have a better understanding of this. And what that thing is, is their base template. So if I scroll down to their basic template here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. We're gonna paste this in here. And again, this is for illustration purposes. I'm gonna cut out this row stuff and I'm gonna put it right underneath the hello world. I'm gonna save this just on my desktop because again, it's just some tests here. So index.html and now this stuff's working. What you'll notice is Bootstrap is going local. So I need to come back in here and I'm gonna use the CDN version of these things. So we're actually gonna use that same CD ver version in a moment. I'll keep the style sheets above, get rid of the other one, and then I'll grab that JavaScript and bring that to the bottom and get rid of the other one. Okay, so now that I've got this, let's go ahead and just open up this file itself. So going into our finder window, we're gonna go into the desktop. I'm gonna open up this index.html. Okay, so I don't need to run a server or anything. I can just open up index as it is. Um, this is how the columns work. Notice it's going all the way across the screen right now. So if I break it down, it's still kind of going that way until I get to some certain point and then they all go all the way across. So what that, what that means is anything above a medium size device, it's going to be a single column. Anything below that, it's gonna to go to the next default. In this case, the next default would be all the way across. Okay, so when I say all the way across, that means that um, at small and below, so if I did column small, that would be the default. That's the next default. So it goes to being all the way across, right? So what if I changed it to column extra small six on the first two? Okay, so I save that and refresh in here and I break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down and keep going. And then notice that, whoa, look at this. I now have two columns side to side. So that is how it's broken down. It uses this system to really just work with how you're gonna be using your content. Notice there is a row here and there's a lot of other stuff to this, but the main thing here is that it is a grid. So learning and understanding this concept is gonna, you need to play around with it to really fully get it. Um, but there are different versions. So the ways or the sizes that you can work with are these right here. So there's LG, medium, um, or LG is in large, medium, small, extra small. And again, you can play around with how those actually work um, based off of the browser and also reading up a little bit more on the documentation. So if you wanna know more about those specifics with Bootstrap, please let us know in the comments below because we can make a whole series on this. We do have something on joincfe.com slash projects already, but there might be something in particular you want to know. Um, so let us know in the comments below. The next thing is components. So components are really easy to use because they're already there for us. So if I actually click on any given group, such as buttons, notice how these buttons are working here. I can just copy this and bring it over into my code and just paste it in, save that. And looking back at that index file, I now see this thing working. But if I break it down, I'll see that the buttons are looking a little bit closer to what they would um, on the bootstrap documentation uh, right here, All right? So they're a little bit closer to this. Obviously when I break that down, it also adjusts, but it's a little bit closer to what that is. Now again, it looks a little bit different because we added this style sheet theme here. If I get rid of that, it's gonna look the same as the documentation. So um, there's a lot of the different things that you want to play around with. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is when I click these drop-down links, they work fine. But once we go into Angular, the part that will absolutely 100% break is this. Um, and that's where we need to actually go into the next part, which is the Angular Bootstrap stuff. So that's really why I'm introducing this in the first place. But since I'm gonna be doing this, I actually wanna bring it into my project. I'm not gonna bring it into my project into the next one because again, this is just kind of an overview of Bootstrap and generally how it works. So the next part is, let's go ahead and just look at the nav bar. This is something we will absolutely implement in our system. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna bring it into my example here. I'm gonna put it again above my body tag there. And then I'm gonna refresh and there we go. So now I have this navigation and if I break it down, it actually works. It's starting to look more and more like a site or a really functioning site. But the next thing I wanna do is get rid of this container dash fluid. Instead, I'm gonna have just containers to see what that looks like. If I refresh that, it brings everything in. This is how you'll see a lot of sites work. And actually, I believe Bootstrap itself um, works that way. So the container also is something with this grid system. The container puts it into this nice block. And since we can do it with the nav bar, we can also do it with our other content by simply just saying div class equals to container. Scroll down to the bottom of that other div and then close this out. I'm gonna tab these in a little bit so we can see that. I refresh and now notice it's nice and lined up from here to here. It's looking really pretty solid as far as Bootstrap is concerned. Um, like again, it's a very useful framework to do because I didn't have to write all the CSS for this to work. And when I break it down, it breaks down just fine. And it, it does actually look pretty good. So that's one thing. And then the next thing is maybe a Jumbotron. We saw that in the example. We saw this right here. Let's go ahead and add in our own Jumbotron. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the first example. And I'm gonna put it above my normal content and I'll just put it right there. And I'll refresh on my page. And here we go. So now the Jumbotron is working or is it? It doesn't look the same here. Now, why is that? Well. Again, we can put a container inside of this Jumbotron, just like we did with the other content. And this will bring it in a little bit for us. There is some margin here that we can also update. So if I click on any given element, I can look at it. So inside of the nav bar, notice that there's that, that like orangish yellow below it. That typically means that there's some margin for it. And there is, there's this margin bottom right here. So if I get rid of that, I can just have no margin. Uh, I'm not really gonna go through and customize it right now, so I will actually leave that margin in there because um, I did wanna say, if we wanted to change the way our nav bar looks, we can do nav bar inverse. And now we've got a black nav bar, right? So there's some cool things with that too. Um, but you might be wondering, well, what if I wanted just a fluid layout? What if I wanted this to go from here all the way over? How does that look? Well, we just add dash fluid to the container or to any container, and that will actually take me all the way across. And it actually works in a little bit better. It does add some padding on the side versus just using a default row. So I, I break it down, it's still working, still starting to look uh, a little bit more usable. And honestly, you might go this direction. You might use fluid because you might actually design for your application mobile first. And that's how Bootstrap's really, that's really where it shines is mobile first. It is meaning that our mobile sites or using the your phone on a smartphone, uh, or excuse me, using your site on a smartphone, it, it usually has that design in mind. So that's essentially what you'll probably end up doing most of the time. But since we are working on a desktop, I'm gonna continue to go with building this thing for a desktop um, initially and then using Bootstrap to make it work with responsive. But the, the reason I would use Fluid is because if your site is optimized for mobile, the Fluid design usually I think fits a little bit better um, for uh, designing for not mobile, but for the desktop. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna stick with container. That is, I'm not gonna be using Fluid um, unless you needed, for some reason, you needed that full screen, but I really like just using container. For most of my projects, that's what I end up doing. And yes, I use Bootstrap all the time. So if you've ever followed with me on other projects, you've probably seen something like this already. Okay, so that's it for this just general overview about Bootstrap. Again, you can come in here and just play around with all sorts of stuff. They give you nice little examples and you can just change things as you want. Now, since they give you all these examples and there's all sorts of content that we can work in, 
um, I'm actually going to be doing it in the project. So I will use a lot of the bootstrap stuff. I won't necessarily reference the documentation because I've worked with it so much that I know these things off the top of my head, um, but I will be using a lot of this stuff in here with the exception of the JavaScript. And that leads me to the next video, which is going to be implementing the JavaScript components using Angular. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.